The heading on this page was stationary points and points of inflection. We just did stationary points. So this is for points of inflection. So that previous flowchart I just showed you, what I envision you getting is a question that says, find the station, locate the stationary points and determine their nature. And that's the series of steps you'll go through. And I hope you can see the logic as to why. Like it's not just random that, you know, sometimes I do a table values and sometimes I don't. That's not random at all, there's good reasons for it. This is what happens if the question just says, okay, find points of inflection. You don't need to determine the nature of a point of inflection, it's just a point of inflection. Okay, so that's why this is rather less complicated, but there are still a few steps to it. Okay, so again, from scratch, before I can do anything, I have a function, what am I going to have to do? Find the second okay, so I need to find the second derivative. To find the second derivative, I need to find the first derivative. So, find dy and dx, that's your first item on the list. Off of that, you differentiate again to find your second derivative. Okay, and now just like before, right? What particular places are we looking for with the second derivative? What properties am I looking for? Uh, yes. D squared over dx squared is zero. Okay, number one, I want to know where it's zero. But secondly, I want to know where there are discontinuities. Just like this. Do you see the, the commonality, zero. right? The critical points, okay? So I'm looking for zeros or places where the second derivative just doesn't exist at all. So again, zeros or discontinuities. Not discontinuities in the graph, discontinuities in the second derivative. Okay, now if the second derivative is never zero and there are no discontinuities, what does that mean? It means there can't possibly be any points of inflection because they all happen at here. Right? So I'm going to be a bit naughty and because um, I've made my box too small. I'm going to say there will be no uh, points of inflection. Okay, so that's great, that's an easy case. However, this is not usually what happens. I'll usually find either, yes, I can solve for d squared, d squared y on dx squared equals zero, or I find a place where the second derivative doesn't exist, so I've still got to work out what's going on. So what do I do? What, what, what makes a point of inflection a point of inflection? What's the definition? There's a change in the sign of the concavity. So that means I've got to look to the left and to the right. I've got to do a table of values. Okay, now after this table of values, one of two things will happen, right? I will either see a change in the sign, or I will not see a change in the sign. What happens if I don't see any change in the sign? If I don't see any, then I go back to here. There are no points of inflection. Like I found places where the first, the second derivative is zero, but it doesn't mean anything, just like x to the fourth. Alternatively, I'll see, okay, concave up, concave down, or vice versa. I will see a change in concavity, right? So this is no change and this is change. Right, in which case, great, I found a point of inflection. And then at this point, I guess I would take that x value, pop it back into the function and get a y value so I know exactly where the point of inflection is. Is this always going to be a horizontal point of inflection? Okay, so here, right, um, for this, this second um, scenario where I'm just interested in points of inflection, I have completely skipped anything to do with the first derivative. I have no idea what the first derivative is equal to in, in this scheme here across these steps. So I don't know if it's a horizontal point of inflection. However, if the question was just find the points of inflection, it doesn't matter whether it's horizontal or not. It's a point of inflection or it's not a point of inflection. The question of whether it's a horizontal point of inflection or not is really a question that gets answered back here with stationary points, right? Because you, first you'll find it's a stationary point, then you'll find max or mean or horizontal point of inflection. Okay. So that's why this is rather more complicated because okay. there's more more things to find. Okay. Any questions? Great. Now, um, I've mentioned this to a couple of you briefly and uh, informally, but all of this, right? It's um, it doesn't tend to be a means to an end. What you're really going to do is take that and add it to everything you already know about curve sketching, and then you can make a super accurate graph and not be like, oh. I don't know, it, it turns. I have no idea where it turns, right? Now you know. Now you can find out, for instance, there's a graph that um, some of you guys asked me. I can't remember the equation now, but it looked like this. Uh, here we go. So, you, um, you found out there was like a vertical asymptote here, vertical asymptote here, and it was a horizontal asymptote at zero. And you knew it would do something like this and something like this. And then you said, what was it going to do in the middle? 
right? Now, what you will find for the graph that um, I was asked about is you get something like this, okay? Now, the second derivative will show you there's a point of inflection right there. I mean, you can actually guess at that without knowing the second derivative, but the second derivative tells you without a shadow of a doubt. It's like, yeah, yeah, I, I can find that thing, okay? Now, it's worth noting. Um, see this thing here? I know it's going to be a rational function. Can anyone guess how I know it's going to be rational? What is a rational function? Rational function means it's like, you know, it's something over something. You know, like it's a ratio, oh, okay. right? it's a fraction. The way I know is because, despite not seeing, having seen this question, I have two vertical asymptotes. How do you get vertical asymptotes? When, the bottom equals zero. when you have a denominator and it can't equal zero. So for instance, I don't know, the denominator of this might be say x squared minus one. Right? Do you see, when I, when I factorize this, I'll get like an asymptote here and an asymptote here. Okay? Now here's the thing. If that's on my denominator, and then I have some stuff up the top, I don't know, maybe maybe x, okay, that would that would do what I wanted to. When you differentiate this, here's the first derivative, okay, this is u, this is v, there's no dodging the quotient rule here, right? So you say, oh, okay, it's going to be v u dash minus u v dash, right, all over v squared, okay, that's that. Now you can simplify that, but then when you go to a second derivative, you're like, oh my goodness, this is going to be a disaster because you have to do this and then this again, and your denominator gets to be this awful thing. But it's okay. It's all right. You don't need to fret because if you're going through this process here, for the second derivative, you don't need to know the whole thing. You just need to know when it's zero or discontinuous, right? Which means you're only really interested in the numerator. That's where you get zeros from. Right? So even though you get some terrible mess down the bottom, x squared minus 1 to the 4, that's like a polynomial degree 8. Gross, okay? You don't have to worry about him. You just have to worry about the numerator and when it's 0. And you will find a single solution. And if you wanted to, you could show it was a point of inflection. Right, so isn't that discontinuous looking at the like, denominator? So, yes, but as in, that's easy, you already know what's happening at those discontinuities. Because they, the discontinuities I get here are discontinuities that I got from the original function. Oh, okay. So I already know the function doesn't exist, so don't worry about it. There can't be a point of inflection there, because there's no point. So it's okay. That's why I can ignore that kind of thing. Alright?